Hello friends, very very welcome to you. Today our topic of discussion is preauricular sinus. Let's have a look at this patient. There is a pit in front of the ear and the patient complains that he has this pit since his birth and sometimes it is associated with discharge and this is called preauricular sinus. It is a congenital anomaly of the pin. So what is the embryology behind this congenital malformation of the pinna? The pinna starts to develop at 6 weeks of gestation. The preauricular sinus results from faulty fusion of hillux of first and second bronchial arches during the development of pinna. The incidence of preauricular sinus is about 0.9% in Western Europe and 10% in East Africa. The sinus pit is located anterior to the crust of helix or above the level of the tragus. The tract is lined by squamous epithelium and it lies lateral to the temporal fascia superiorly and the parotid fascia inferiorly. It goes to the subcutaneous tissue with a branching and tortuous pattern and the terminal portion of the tract is adherent to the cartilage of the helix. It may also extend into the parotid gland. So etiologically preauricular sinus may be sporadic or inherited. A sporadic preauricular sinus is usually unilateral and interestingly it is found most commonly on the right side. The inherited pattern of preauricular sinus is seen in 25 to 50 percent of cases and it may be bilateral and the inheritance is autosomal dominant with variable penetrance. The inherited variety of preauricular sinus may be associated with bronchioautorenal syndrome. The bronchioautorenal syndrome is associated with preauricular sinus, structural defect of the outer, middle and inner ear and renal abnormality. Now come to the presentation of preauricular sinus. It is present at birth but remains mostly asymptomatic. There may be sebaceous secretion from the punctum and repeated infection may cause the secretion to be purulent and repeated infection can cause an abscess to be formed. As the sinus is lined by squamous epithelium, a spontaneous resolution does not occur and if the tract is blocked then a retention cyst may form and patient may present with cyst. Bilateral preauricular sinus may present with hearing loss. Now come to the diagnosis. Diagnosis is usually clinical. When the sinus is found above the level of the tragus, it is usually isolated preauricular sinus. But if it is found below the level of the tragus, then it is most likely to be related to the first bronchial cleft anomaly. And the external auditory canal should be looked for a fistula as the inherited pattern of preauricular sinus may present with hearing loss and renal abnormality, audiometry sometimes needed and renal ultrasonography is also required. Renal ultrasonography is indicated when there is history of maternal gestational diabetes mellitus, family history of ear abnormality or hearing loss, associated craniofacial abnormalities, associated cardiac abnormalities, associated gastrointestinal abnormalities and associated limb abnormalities. So treatment of the preauricular sinus, when it is asymptomatic then no treatment is required. But when there is recurrent infection and unsightly appearance then surgery is indicated. But surgery is not done in acute cases, acute case is treated with antibiotic. In case of abscess formation, it should be first treated with needle aspiration and antibiotic therapy. Incision and drainage is avoided due to risk of sinus tract disruption and seeding and less likely due to risk of facial nerve injury. In case of surgical treatment, wide local excision is the treatment of choice. 
an elliptical incision is made around the punctum and the tract is followed carefully. Sometimes methylene blue dye is instilled for easy visibility of the sinus tract during dissection. The excision of the tract should include adjacent tragal perichondrium and tragal cartilage to prevent recurrence. The deep limit of excision is temporalis fascia. To avoid damage to the facial nerve, the surgeon should remain posterior to the superficial temporal artery. And the deep limit of excision is the temporalis fascia. Now some points regarding recurrence of preauricular sinus after surgical excision. Most recurrences occur within two weeks of surgery. Late recurrence is very rare. The recurrence rate following simple synectomy is almost 40%. Recurrence rate is higher when the cartilage is not excised and there is previous history of recurrence and previous surgical excision. So to avoid recurrence, we have to take some necessary measures. We have to meticulously dissect the tract and it should be completely excised including the tragal cartilage and perichondria. The rupture of sinus during dissection should be avoided and the dead space of the wound should be closed layer by layer. So this is all from preauricular sinus. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.